Hi everybody out there in the void. I'm Zach. This is the Shaken Fist. And today we finally are coming to the end of having to talk about inspiring sophistry. So that's cool, right? It's, it, it'll be over. It'll be done until the next time I have to talk about him. So that's cool. Um, I don't have a lot to say, I suppose. Uh, like and subscribe, leave a comment. Subscribe to the Patreon if you want to help the channel out in better ways. Um, yeah. Cool. Let's just get on with the show then. Onwards. Although, just before we start, actually, I do remember one thing. There is one thing from the last video that I didn't notice. Right? So let's go to this graph. Look at this graph Every time I do it makes me graph What I didn't notice, and I only I only noticed this looking over with the missus Uh, fucking <laughs> What I didn't notice, right? It's on this graph You see right here, on the female side, it says effective population size in thousands, right? But it also says it on the male side But what I didn't notice, because I was being, I was being a bit dim that day, is that, did you notice that the top number on the female one is 500,000 as an effective population size? Uh, but the male is only 150,000. And that's at the highest. So, it's saying that it, the women always vastly outnumbered the men. And not just because of a genetic bottleneck. <laughs> it doesn't really change anything I said. I just think it's a funny oversight that both of us missed. But now I haven't missed it, so... <laughs> As it is often assumed that while in exile in Babylon, the Jews just made their own monotheistic version of the Flood account by plagiarizing the polytheistic versions. I mean, I would actually say that they were taken much, much earlier than that. Maybe around the time of King Josiah made Judah in fucking vassal state of Assyria. Maybe it's from then. You know, considering that it takes heavily from the Atrahasis, which is a, a Syrian myth. Let me just make sure of that. It's Akkadian. Close enough. But James Hoffmeyer notes, if this movement towards monotheism occurred during the Babylonian captivity... But it didn't! The move to monotheism happened in the 7th century BC under King Josiah when he went... It even t talks about it in your fucking holy book, dickhead! He went up and took down the high places. He got rid of the Asherah symbols and the Ash temples for Asherah. And found the Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy uh, the book of Deuteronomy. He is the one who did this. King Josiah specifically. You know, if we want to make it happen after the Babylonian captivity, well then you can't point to any of the evidence that talks about anything else, right? Like, it's fucking stupid. It's so fucking stupid. It... <laughs> I wish in science we could just pick and choose stuff like this however we wanted. You know, actually, if we say that actually the cooling down from the Big Bang happened like 500 million years later, well, then it will solve all sorts of problems with the math. So we'll just say it happened then, right? I wish we could do that instead of having to have precise dates and measurements. Like, we have to figure out this shit to, like, such a degree of accuracy because people would rather fucking hear the, li the, the lies that are warm and comforting than hard truths that they don't like. So we have to be so fucking accurate. Measurements have to be down to the fucking nanometer. We have to know down to the day when shit happened. We have to fucking fight against everyone trying to make up their own fucking reality every second of the fucking day. Because, well, why learn things, right? Why know things? And knowing is half the battle. Because knowing things and learning things, well, it makes you care about stuff. And you don't want to, people don't want to care about stuff. People don't want to give a shit about anything outside their immediate fucking circle, right? So, no, no, I don't care about any of this. And, you know, people will listen to you know, Christians will listen to inspiring country for fucking 
And that's it. Inspiring sophistry. I've, I've totally forgotten. Thank you, Mike, above really for that one. I've, I've, it's inspiring sophistry. <laughs> um, many people will listen to inspiring sophistry just so they can fucking feel good about themselves. Because, well, now they're thinking about it in a different way. And they're not going to look up the shit that you're saying, right? And that's why we're supposed to feel all fucking kowtowed and poo-poo to smart people, isn't it? You know, oh, well, you get taught from an early age it's okay to bully smart people because you can bully the nerds and you can bully the geeks and they know things and you don't want to do, you don't, you shouldn't know things. And when people know stuff, right, they can hold you to account because they go, well, no, you said that wrong and that fact's wrong and actually you're doing this wrong because we know better because we're intelligent. And then, well, actually, you're just supposed to fucking look down on smart people, right? So then if anyone tells you something that makes you feel warm and fuzzy inside, well, they're the people to listen to because, well, they don't want to actually think about things or confront stuff, right? So none of it matters and we can dodge all the evidence to the contrary if we just talk about this book being written after the Babylonian exile. when it, That's not when it was done at all. But, you know, if we could move the goalposts and hope that nobody fucking notices, then it's okay, right? I wish I could be as scummy as a fucking Christian like this guy. Stop! Blasphema! It seems counterintuitive to take the polytheistic mythic literature of Babylon and place it into the Hebrew monotheistic writings. In other words, it is unlikely for the Jews to have borrowed from polytheistic cultures if they were supposed to be moving away from that idea. Wow. Except for when the Hebrews were a polytheistic culture and worshipped many gods. It even says it in your fucking Bible. You shall hold no other gods before me because God knows he's not the only fucking God. God had a wife. They had a council of gods, right? That's what the Sumerians worshipped. So that's why they were evil. You know, it's almost like in the 7th century BCE, King Josiah did away with that and turned them into a polytheism. Uh, turned their polytheism into a monotheism. So why, why? Why, why? 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 Why would they nick them from that? I don't know to try and give themselves legitimacy because people have heard these sorts of tales their entire lives. Oh, and it turns out that Josiah found found some stuff that says actually ours is different and better? Well, isn't that gee golly good and nice? The Genesis account is more likely just their own oral traditions handed out to them as well. The ancient world was very sure there was a catastrophic flood and simply drew out of the known cultural history when writing down the accounts of the flood. Do you see this little bit right down here? Do you see it there? Do you notice how he's not really talking about it and only putting it in, a, in an asterisk? Because if you talk about it too much, you might have to talk about how the Bible does that as well. And considering, you know, he also wants to ignore the Eridu Genesis and how many lines it is. Maybe that doesn't come up yet. Oh, well. Or maybe it are as or not. I can't remember. But... It's weird how he keeps on wanting to take it away from the Sumerians. And, you know, the area of Genesis, you ignore how many lines it is. And you ignore the similarities from the Sumerian myths that are totally like ours. And you ignore the fact that they were handed down to the Babylonians and to the Assyrians. Blah, 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 blah. It's just hand woven away because it's a little bit of text. Cool, right? Well, you know, they're, they, they both, they're both just handed down. To, for put from father to son over orally it's just an oral tradition and they both did it and you know it doesn't if that's the case then doesn't it show that the oral tradition changes fucking stories all the time if this is based on a real thing like a flood in the fucking uh, in in the sea uh, the gulf of arabia or the black sea flooding right or like something like that so what you're saying is it's almost like all of these things aren't what happened in the bible and if these are taken from oral tradition and handed down, and that's why you don't see it in fucking Egypt or China or st and stuff like that, because, well, Egypt didn't really flood because the Nile is very tameable, and the Yangtze and the Yellow River was their flood myth, not the whole fucking world, right? And, like, it's not like the flood myths about Mes from Mesopotamia, right? Where they kind of thought that really was the whole world, because they didn't have a giant scope of what everything was, because it comes from even older than fucking, you know, like fucking Chinese and Egyptian one well, maybe not Egyptian shit but like definitely older than almost everything else in well almost everything everything else in the fucking area you know because you know Sumeria is really fucking old right so when you have 
even when you look at the map of the world from like Babylon or whatever, there's just a bunch of water and there's a little bit where they are. You know what I mean? Like they thought that they that's all there was, basically. <laughs> so when the ta so when the Tigris and the Euphrates flood and it floods so bad that the fucking water the rivers change, well then you gotta make up a flood map. But hey, who gives a shit about that, right? So what you're saying is is these people, these two disparate peoples, right? experienced the same event, traumatic event in their past and then told the stories differently over time. So if that's the case, then how is one more real than the other? Aside from the fact you worship one and not the other. Like, fucking hell. It's still real to me, damn it! <laughs> Similarities that exist tend to be viewed by many scholars, not as literary dependency, but as shared traditions or two literary perspectives on a single actual event. You know, if we listen to Christian scholars, they say that. If you listen to non-Christian scholars or actual Christian scholars that are honest about themselves and when they're doing their scholarly work, they take off their Christian hat and they do they put on the scholar hat and vice versa. They say, actually, no, these are probably taken from that time. And it probably has something to do with King Josiah making... Uh, Judea, a vassal state in the 7th century BC under, under, and changed a lot of laws to the Assyrian law code as he changed them from a polytheistic religion into a monotheistic religion. And we have lots of proof of this. <laughs> like, lots. We don't have vague assertions from 15 different books, and we don't have to cherry-pick from certain studies. We could just look at the fucking archaeological evidence. And we could go, oh, it's weird how after this strata we don't see any more Asherah figures. It seems to be around the time of the 7th century BCE when King Josiah made Judah a vassal state. Weird how we know that happened, even if it's in your fucking Bible. Walton highlights this point with an illustration of the Hittite and Egyptian accounts of the Battle of Kadesh. Yes. <laughs> that, that battle, when neither side won and tried to make out that they both won, so they could say to their sides that they won and not the other. And that's why the treaty went the way it did. And it wasn't two powerful nations. You know, one on the rise, the Hittites, and another on the fall, the, 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 the Egyptians, and just went, fuck it. Should we just call it? And they went, yeah. Could we just tell the other people that we won? Yeah, cool. They agreed to that shit. This is very different. This is actual cultural appropriation. That's what we're talking about. But of course, this is a right-wing fuckstick and cultural appropriation isn't real, right? So, these people that were made a vassal state by a Mesopotamian nation weren't made to think Mesopotamian things at all. And then it happened again in Babylon. And then the Jews got Hellenified after fucking, what, after Alexander came in. And then they got fucking turned into Romanes, Romans. You know, like, it's like they change every time someone takes them over. Because <laughs> they're a small piss out in country and you know when in rome or well, sorry when conquered by rome do as the romans do or get your temple destroyed and be brutally slaughtered unless you're a roman citizen yay josephus since they are reporting about the same event we would expect there to be similarities and each religious and cultural perspective will also produce differences the similarities do not mean one copied the other but can just equally mean they share the same traditions about something that actually happened in the past. And the one that came afterwards is definitely more correct than the one that came first. Because the similarities between the Eridu Genesis and Genesis, right? They have nothing to do with the fact they're called Genesis. <laughs> when the waters, when the salt water mixed with the thingy, when the salt water mixed with the fresh water, you know world was made you know because that's that's what the Eridu genesis says and the bible says it's the other way around he separated the waters because it's saying that yahweh is more powerful than tiamat and fucking oh abzu you know the, the things that they get separate and god separates them in the in the bible so what's the symbology there symbology now that Duffy has relinquished his king bonehead crown, I see we have an heir to the throne. I'm sure the word you were looking for was symbolism. What is the symbolism there? Uh, let me explain it to you. Well, you see, because he's more powerful. Instead of them coming together to make stuff, he's ripping them apart because Leviathan is fucking Tiamat. <laughs> They're both, you know, 
God, you know, the, the gods make the fucking man from clay in the Eridu Genesis. Quick note, uh, it's not that's not part of the Eridu Genesis. That's the story of Enki and Nenma, uh, Nenhursag, sorry, uh, like making people out of clay. It's still a Sumerian myth, though, like the Eridu Genesis. So, like I was saying before, it's just stealing all this stuff from Sumeria. It's weird how many things come from there. Like, it's like a feeding line through different nations to the Jews. Weird that. It's almost like you can trace it through Akkadian into Hebrew as well. But pff, who cares about stuff like that, right? Carry on! And then Yahweh makes Adam from clay and even makes a fucking pun out of it. Like, he's, they're both made to till the soils. And then, like, God gets displeased with them for various reasons and then tries to drown them all. And they build a big city about it. It's like, it's almost like they just looked, took fucking cliff notes and went, well, we can do this better. It's like, it's like watching, right? It's like watching the Lord of the Rings film after reading it. And you go, why the fuck has an Aragorn reforged the fucking sword that was broken in Rivendell? Because he's a little bitch in the film. Because oh, I really need to fuck that elf lady. And you know what? I don't want to reforge the sword, even though I am the fucking heir that will reclaim Gondor. Gondor! Like, you know what I mean? These people thought they could do it better, just like every fucking film adaptation of any video... Oh, man, some of the video game adaptations are getting better. But, like, any fucking book or whatever, they go, no, we can do it better, yo. We can do it better. That's all this is. It's just somebody going, we can do it better for us. Yeah, well, I'm gonna go build my own theme park with blackjack and hookers. In fact, forget the park. Nahum Sarna agrees. It cannot be claimed that any version of the Flood account, presently known, is the direct source of the biblical narrative. For the latter has points of contact with each version while it also contains items independent of them all. What? A religious source that their religion didn't nick from somebody else's? Oh no, I can't believe they'd say that obvious thing that they all say. Christians say, well, you know, well, we're just a continuation of Christ. We didn't nick it from the Jews. We just pick and choose, you see? <laughs> a nice, rich tradition of just nicking whatever you want from anybody else's religion and then just pretending it's yours. It's like you guys are the British from, like, 1066 to even fucking now. <laughs> like, oh, that, well, that, oh, that seems like a very nice country. Very nice spices. Very, a lot of brown people there, though. Well, it's mine now. <laughs> I just set up a viceroy. <laughs> like, come on. We stole countries with the cunning use of flags. Yeah. <laughs> just sail around the world and stick a flag in. I claim India for Britain. And they go, you can't claim us. We live here. 500 million of us. Do you have a flag? We don't need a bloody flag. It's our country, you bastard. <laughs> no flag, no country. You can't have one. That's the rules that I've just made up. And I'm backing it up with this gun. It is obvious that the differences are too great to encourage belief in direct connection between Atrahasis and Genesis. But just as obviously, there is some kind of involvement in the historical traditions generally of the two peoples. And that, that's, that's an oral tradition that deviated from each other because they played telephone for a thousand plus years. <laughs> like, and then they came up with two different stories and ours kept it holy and pure the entire time because it's the divine inspired word of God and it's never changed. That's why there's two flood narratives massed together. It was never changed! Kenneth Kitchen explains that parallel traditions about an ancient event would be a simpler and more satisfying explanation. Yeah, to a fucking theist. Like, fuck Kitchen, man. Fuck him. He's a fucking Christian fuck who just wants to look for whatever he can to, to, to satisfy his own fucking doubts about his religion that he's a part of. Fuck Kenneth Kitchen. Fuck inspiring sophistry. And fuck anybody who actually likes either of these cunts. Fuck them all. Fuck them. Fuck these boomers. Fuck these yuppies. And fuck everybody, now that I think of it. Like, how many fucking books... Does this fucking guy have to go through to talk about this one fucking Bible that you're you're not supposed to have any other fucking information from outside? Because trust not in your own fucking understanding, right? It's something that I call analytic perfectionism, and you may have it. Let me read to you from Proverbs three verse five: Trust in the Lord with all your heart. There's what to do, and then it says that warning: and lean not. To your own understanding and saying don't try and figure things out just trust the lord like a little child trusts their father 
Don't even question it. Trust not in your own understanding, but I gotta trust in Kenneth Kitchens, and I gotta trust in this guy, and this guy, and this guy. Like... What the Bible means to say, yeah. <laughs> what the Bible means to say. Now that's a good book. This is just the desperate lengths that people have to go through to try and stitch stuff together when it doesn't make sense when they say it out loud. It makes sense in their head because, you know, your head has all those rose-tinted glasses about how special and great you are, you know, unless you have depression and how, how much better you think about everything so you have all the right, correct and true answers. And then when you say it out loud, you go, well, that doesn't say right. Well, I best, I best perform some mental gymnastics and fucking make it fit. And then I can pretend like, uh, you know, I've looked for very particular quotes in this book, very particular quotes in that book, and a very particular quote from this study that isn't actually about what the study's about, you see. And I can mi misrepresent this and ignore that. And look at the thing I've weaved together. Isn't this a great story of the glory of God? Hallelujah, everybody. Hallelujah. We get to make it up as we go along. And as long as it sounds all right to us well then it's plausible this and it's plausible that and it seems like this and it's just all a bunch of hokum bullshit that's all it is he then goes on to note the genesis account is in no way more evolved and is actually a simpler and less mythological account the quote he says there does not say less mythological yeah so there's nothing about what he's saying that it says it's less mythological he's just made that up hasn't he because wouldn't he, if, if, if he's taking quotes from this book, then wouldn't he just quote that bit as well? But no, of course Kith Kitchen would say it's less, less mythological because he believes it's true. So it's not a myth to him. It's a very 100% true, so it can't be a myth. It's just the way it happened, right? What a fucking joke. In terms of length, the flood account of Genesis would equal about 120 lines of the Sumerian or Akkadian versions. Whereas the flood account of the Atrahasis was originally at least some 370 lines long. And? What? So it's a third of the length? So it's more true because it's concise even though it's obviously two stories put together? And also, what the fuck does lines have to do with it? Like, how do you know? It? Like, so the way it's written has this many lines because it's on it's in cuneiform and this one's in a different language, you see. So it has a different set of lines because one is written on a giant scroll and then was cut apart by people making chapters and verses centuries, in fact, millennia after it was written. So, of course, it makes more sense if you look at it this way. Who gives a shit about how many fucking lines there are? The Atrahasis is a fucking a thousand to fifteen hundred years older than Noah's story. But the other one, the one that came a thousand to fifteen hundred years later, well, that's obviously more true because it came later. <laughs> it's got less lines, so it's more true. It's like, it's like, say, there's a card game in Britain. It's called Top Trumps, and what it is, it's a bunch of shitty cartoon pictures or pictures of whatever, like oh, it's Transformers or Turtles or whatever, right? And then you go, ah, oh, it's got this power, and you go, oh, I've got this thing, and it's this power, and then I want to, I, I got this card, and I want to test out its power, and then you put them both down, and whoever has the most power gets both cards, right? Or the most speed, or whatever, whatever stat it is, right? Because that's all this is, well, mine has less lines than yours, so it's concise, so it's true. Something being short does not denounce its veracity of truth. Like, you're just reaching really fucking hard. To, well, well, you can see how it's shorter, so that means it's good, right? It'd be... Uh, like, fuck off, okay? How about every single one of them isn't true? And if they're all talking about an event that happened well before any of them were written, and they, they deviated oral traditions, then you can't trust either of them anyway! Because they're not even talking about the fucking event that it actually was. But it's a worldwide flood, and it doesn't matter that Egypt doesn't have it, we still believe it today, so it's more true. <laughs> in the Epic of Gilgamesh, the flood account is about 200 lines long. Whoa, 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 as Kitchen says, why the fuck are you putting up that the Eridu Genesis is the same amount of fucking lines and just skipping over it, motherfucker? Oh, I don't do lines of omission, I just do straight talking truth, motherfucker, you can't, I know, you see, this 120 is shorter than the 370 of the Outer Houses and the 200 of Giggle Mesh, you know, I'm putting up the Eridu Flood account, but it's the same thing, we'll just skip over that, it don't matter. So as Kitchen says, Genesis 6-8 was probably the simplest and shortest of all the ancient versions, possibly originating as early as they, and was certainly not a secondary elaboration on them. 
Why does any of that say that? It's the simplest and shortest. Except it's exactly the same fucking length as the Eridu Genesis, but we'll just skip over that one, right? Because it was just put it at the end. And you're supposed to assume that he was still talking about all those, the other ones, right? <laughs> how to show how fucking disingenuous inspiring knob industry is in one short video. Ta-da! Genesis 1 to 11 is also simpler and less mythological in other places. Like how it attributes the development of culture and cities to humans alone instead of divine creatures. Wow, it said that people did it, not God. Like, it's more true because it says that, like, is that why this is stuff at the end? This stuff's at the end? Because it's a real fucking stretch and you're pretty sure that no one's really going to watch it that far. Like, that's really, but it, this is really fucking pathetic, to be honest. Like, really, really fucking pathetic. Well, Oz doesn't attribute what man does to, to, to God. It attributes it to them. Except for when God changes their mind or hardens their heart, right? And having a much simpler creation account that didn't involve a cosmic battle or war. It's so much simpler that we've got two different creation accounts that don't agree with each other. So simple. We got so, it's so it's so simple so it's simple simples so simples so very simples that the two different creation myths in the same book one chapter after the next and they tell two different stories with two different ways of creation two different ways that Eve is made and different orders that things are done and like different events that happen but it's very easy very easy and it's much simpler than hey like you know, they both made gods out of clay, but one was doing it to prove a point, and they both did it because they wanted people to farm, right? But don't don't look at the similarities of that one in the Garden of Eden, and, you know, the garden in the tales of fucking Enki, where, you know, he's trying to fuck some fucking goddesses, and then, you know, Eve removes some tumors because he eats from the trees! You know, some fascinating shit. You know, like how it puts the fishes and the birds together, and there's literally a tale of the fish and the birds. Where it talks about the moral differences and who is morally better, a fish or a bird. But hey, who gives a shit about all the ancillary fucking Mesopotamian myths that totally correlate with what goes on in Genesis? Because it's not, it's definitely not taken from it. It's definitely not. They definitely aren't referencing it at all. Nah, they're definitely different. Don't, don't, don't read any of the other ones. Will you stop trying to put them together, please? I just, uh, we, we knew ours for thousands of years and theirs was lost. And you've only just figured it out in the past 150 years how to read it again. D could you please stop? Could you please stop reading it and figuring it out? Could you not do that? Because, you know, it's proving us wrong a lot. And we would prefer that if you didn't do that. Thank you. As we noted earlier, the Genesis timelines for the Flood also seems more likely over the pagan versions, given how long a monsoon would have lasted and what would have needed to have happened for the region to fill up and flood. Yeah, because monsoons definitely have fountains that open up the, from the cracks in the, in the earth and spew out water, and then the, the, the heavens literally open as the water from outside the firmament pours down. Yeah, definitely a monsoon. And you, you see how it's got the days. Is it more, the, I know I said a monsoon only lasts for about a week to a two, like a, to, from a week and a half to two weeks, but that's closer to 40 days, right? Than seven. You know, I remember watching The Price is Right when I was a wee boy. You know, Bob Barker would come down and he'd say, hey, I'll, you know, you, hey, Jeanette, Come on down. And the guy, you know, there was a fatter guy with glasses that he used to say. He'd go, oh, it's Jeanette Spanish from Texas. You, why don't you come on down? And then you go, oh, it's, it's, it's John, it's John Smith from New York. Why don't you come on down? And you get a bunch of people and you go, how, what, how much is all the, this thing? And they go, it's a bike or a camper van. And you'd all guess on the prices, right? But you were supposed to guess the closest to the price without going over. And, you know, maybe, maybe I've just watched too much Price is Right, but when you're over two weeks away from what it fucking says to begin with, and the other one is definitely closer, well, you know. <laughs> I know it says that, that, I know I said, I know he said before that, like, all the monsoons changed over a couple thousand year period, but it was def the flood was one thing. It's definitely, it was just a bunch of them, though. It was just a bunch of them, and then he made a bunch of, he made a table of nations, and, like... I don't understand, aside from people don't want to know why they accept this level of bullshit and not, 
Here's all this archaeological evidence and geological evidence and meteorological evidence and all this different shit that shows that none of this stuff happened. It definitely didn't happen in the way you did want it to. <laughs> and people still prefer the other one. I suppose that's why these fucking theists fight. Oh, atheism doesn't give you anything. Because it's it's really a financial transaction, isn't it? Just believe what I want and we'll give you the promise of heaven. And it doesn't matter if it doesn't come because you'll be dead by the time you realize that I'm lying. Hooray! Aren't we surrounded by a bunch of wholesome, nice people? Yes. Alan Miller agrees. If judgment is to be passed as to the priority of one tradition over the other, Genesis inevitably wins. In creation... Its account is admired for its simplicity and grandeur. Its concept of man accords well with observable facts. Yep. The world's flat. Uh, <laughs> space is made of water. Uh, it's, it's full of all observable facts. And, and I just love how Christians point at other Christians that say, well, of course I believe in it too. And they go, you see? He's a smart man. He believes in it, right? Combine with this, Richard Hess notes the names of Genesis 4 and 5 do not show the mark of Iron Age etymology and actually show more relation to the second millennium BC or older. Many of these names have associations with the second millennium BC or earlier, either through the names of Sumerian cities such as Urak and Eridu. Hey! I'm American too. You see, you are UK. Uruk. Uk. Fucking pronounce things properly, you fucking American idiot. Jesus fucking Christ. I'm American, so I don't have to pronounce things. It's Iraq. You know, like Iraq. Because there's definitely an A, isn't there? You can read, right? I mean, obviously, maybe you can't. Because... Of some of the fucking things you've pulled out as fucking evidence. <laughs> or through elements that do not occur later in personal names. Examples of these include Methushael and the first part of Tubalcain, which may refer to the Hurrian word for smith. So the early chapters of Genesis that are paired with the flood account seem to reflect associations with the second millennium BC. Yeah, through Sumerian and Hurrian names! Like, the examples you use, it's not even like, well, they're old Levantine names. We could connect them to the Hyksos or Canaan or something like that. No, you're going, well, this is a Syrian name and this is Hurriad. None of them are from Levantine peoples. They're all Mesopotamian peoples. But it's not taken from Mesopotamian things at all. Like, seriously? Is it just got that close to the end of the video? You hope if you just rattle off a bunch of shit like this at the end that no one will fucking notice? Are you fucking joking me, right? Like, oh my Jesus Christ. Making it plausible the Genesis flood account came from an earlier time period, and not simply crafted late in the Iron Age. Well, no, because everyone thinks that everyone who actually is worth a damn thinks that it was actually created. I don't know. Around the 8th to 7th century BCE. <laughs> around the time of King Josiah, when he was made of it, when he, when he accepted, uh, you see, the Assyrians, they went in and they conquered Samaria. And, and completely took down the fucking, uh, the, uh, the Israelites, right? Because they were the northern kingdom with all ten tribes, right? And then they went into Judah, which was only two tribes, and made them a vassal state because they weren't worth conquering. And Josiah made pol political and religious reforms, turning Judaism from polytheism into monotheism and changing things in the Pentateuch. But if we ignore that... On a side note, metalworking and agriculture have been shown to be much older than we thought. So the occupations of Genesis 4 are not necessarily anachronistic. Oh, fuck off. Just have, just fuck off. Iron Age and Copper Age, it isn't, it's different in every place. You understand this, right? <laughs> I don't think you do, right? So, it's, so when, when you understand, right, people were still in the Stone Age in the Americas, when people had reached the Iron Age over in, in Europe and Asia, you see? Different civilizations had different ages depending on when they stopped being hunter-gatherers, found copper and thingy deposits and iron deposits and blah, 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 blah. Right? People reach different ages at different times. Can we stop pretending they're all at the same fucking time? Thus, although this data doesn't prove there was an ark or a man named Noah, the biblical account does seem to align with the external evidence, 
and the internal evidence does show it is not necessarily just a copy of Mesopotamian flood legends, and could be an oral tradition handed down from an Akkadian source that reflects a real flood in the past that was told by the descendants of the survivors. So by his own fucking words, I guess we nicked a story orally instead of from like the written source. It was definitely, we nicked it orally instead from Sumerian things. And you know, if we line up a bunch of evidence that ignores the other evidence put in those studies, you know, like, eh, well, there was a genetic bottle for males, but not females. And well, it definitely got colder around this one place, but we'll pretend it's everywhere, right? Read your fucking studies and read other things that aren't just Christian books that are trying to flate you to make thing make you believe things better. Then read your Bible and do what it say. Atheist. Oh. So fucking happy that I don't have to do any more of this inspiring sophistry knob ed for a while. I'm so fucking done with him for a bit. I'm so happy I don't have to do this shit. In summary, we can see, watching through this entire video, that this man is a scumfuck lying son of a bitch that cares more about fucking lying to you about everything in existence and making you believe his shit so he can feel fucking better about himself and feel a little bit more fucking pious. That's all he gives a shit about. He doesn't give a shit about truth. He doesn't give a shit about actual facts and archeological stuff and geological stuff. He doesn't give a shit about any of it. All he gives a shit about, like every other fucking theist, is just proving their own selves right so they can feel special on the inside and don't have to feel dumb that they were believing a lie for so fucking long. Fuck! Goodbye, everybody. And since I don't have to do this again, I guess I'll play some of the debut single of the Abrahamines to, 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 to play us out. To play us out. What does that mean? To play us out. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll, no. we'll do it live! Fuck it! Why don't so what have I done? Yahweh, just tell me, just tell me, why Lord, what have they done? Yahweh, my family, my family.